Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to go over a microeconomic topic, which is non-price determinants of demand. In particular, we're going to look at the impact of changes of, of income on the demand curve, leading to a shift inward or outward. Just a bit of review before we start graphing this. Uh, right here, we can see non-price determinants of demand include taste and preferences or changes in taste and preferences of consumers, which is kind of referring to the popularity of a product. If the product becomes popular, maybe demand increases while price is constant, or if it's unpopular, price decreases um, while price is constant. In addition to non-price determinants of demand, price of related goods, substitutes and complements. And I have separate videos on how to graph and analyze that. In addition, non-price determinants of demand include future price expectations, what consumers expect to happen to price in the future, which can change their consumption patterns in the present. The number of consumers, it's kind of looking at the size of the market. This might deal with population demographics, changes in the size of the population, which, which can impact the demand for certain goods and services. In this particular video, we're gonna focus on income. All right. Now, in economics, the symbol for income is the letter Y. So I'll be using that symbol to represent income right, as we go over uh, graphing and analyzing this. So let me go ahead and erase this and just highlight Singapore as an example. I've used Singapore in a few videos because it's such a great example of the dramatic increase in per capita income over time as a result of Singapore's uh, efforts to improve the quality of their labor through, through uh, education. So Singapore, right? Gross national income per capita data is illustrated here. Gross national income or the amount of income generated by each citizen of Singapore over time, on average, over time. And uh, Singapore, let me just scroll this down a bit so we can see this better. <clears throat> I believe declared independence around 1963. And its gross national income was about 530 US dollars, meaning each person on average was generating $530 of income per year. And then we can see that as a result of Singapore's efforts to really improve the quality of their education, which is a long run investment, which we call in macroeconomics supply side interventionist, the government has intervened to increase the quality of education, public education, perhaps. It takes a generation to see the benefits of those investments. So we go through the 60s, the 70s, and then by the early 80s, we start to see the impact of that investment. So by 1982, about 20, 23 years, uh, 20 years later, gross national income is rising to about $6,000 per person. And then from then on, it just really begins to skyrocket. Goes up to, uh, 27,000 in 1997, and then the Asian financial crisis hit. So we'll see that there's a decrease in income. We'll talk about in the, that in our model. And then from 2002 onward, it just continues to rise and goes up to 2014 to about $56,000 generated as income per person per year. All right. Again, dramatic increase, right? Going back from 1963, $530 of income per person per year to $56,000 of income per person per year. Wow, just absolutely amazing. So we're gonna first talk about what's the impact of rising income on demand for what we call normal and inferior goods. Inferior goods, an example could be generic brands. Going to the supermarket and buying the generic brand of that supermarket, it's not a brand name, it's uh, you know, a type of uh, brand created by that particular supermarket. Maybe the quality is not so good, but at least it's cheaper than the name brand. And we're going to see that as incomes rise, demand for generic brands decrease. Why? Because with the higher income, people can switch to the brand name, the uh, higher quality product. So that's going to be our example. So let's go ahead and illustrate this. So here we have graph A and graph B. Graph A is looking at the market for normal goods, goods of a higher quality than the inferior goods.
graph B, the market for inferior goods. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis of both graphs and the price of these goods on the y-axis. Price being the independent variable, quantity the dependent variable. In economics, we place the independent variable on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and illustrate the demand curve for inferior goods as well. All right, I'm going to uh, label this D3, and you'll see why in just a moment. <clears throat> and let's say um, we have a price for the inferior goods at, I'll call this P3 and Q3. So I'm just going to go ahead and label this. I'm going to go ahead and label this point C. All right. So again, let's look at Singapore. And let's look at this period of rising income over time and what's happening to the demand for normal and inferior goods. So even though we're looking at the variables of quantity and price, there is an additional variable that's impacting the demand, and that variable is income. So we're going to assume that income in Singapore, per capita income, is rising. Okay. Again, the symbol for income is Y. So as incomes rise, what happens to demand? As incomes rise, the demand for normal goods increases. People have more disposable income to spend on better quality products. So here we can see the demand curve shifting out from D1 to D2. The price of these normal goods, we're going to assume, are, is being held constant. So firms are not changing their price. There's another force other than price that's impacting the demand curve. In that, in that case, it's income. And the quantity of demand along their new demand curve of D2 has increased from Q1 to Q2, or from point A to point B along the new demand curve. So here we can see, again, as incomes rise, we expect the demand for the normal good to rise, which is a positive causal relationship between the two variables. Income rising leading to the demand for the normal good to rise. As incomes rise, what happens to the demand for the inferior goods? We see that there's a negative causal relationship. It falls. People with their higher income switch away from the inferior good and switch towards the normal good. So here we can see that the demand curve decreases from D3 to D4. Moving for, uh, leading to a, a decrease in the quantity of consumption from Q3 to Q4 along the new demand curve of D4. From moving from point C to point D. Right? And that's shifting inwards as a result of that increase in income, reduced demand for the inferior goods, increasing income increased demand for the normal good. Now, with this, we can also look at what happens to total revenue. In graph A, total revenue originally was P1 times Q1, which is equal to, let's say, this rectangular area. And I'll go ahead and label that. <clears throat> Perhaps we'll use a slightly different color. It was originally this area price times quantity here is a visual representation of the total revenue being generated by, um, by firms selling this normal good. And I'm just going to highlight this area here to also help us. So we'll go ahead and label this rectangular area A and this rectangular area B. So total revenue originally was price times quantity, P1 times Q1, which is equal to area A. All right. Then it changes all right, as a result of the increase in demand and the rising incomes. Let's say this is total revenue 2, equal to stable price of P1, but an increased quantity of Q2, which is equal to the surface areas of A plus B. So that we see that as incomes rise, demand for normal goods rises, and we also see that total revenue rises for these firms that are offering the normal goods. It's the opposite for the firms that are offering inferior goods. 
So again, let's go ahead and label some areas to help us visually understand this. Here we have this area here. And we'll use this area here. And I'll label this um, C and D. Okay. So here, total revenue one is equal to a price of P3 times Q3, which is equal to areas C plus D. Then as a result of the reduced demand, total revenue falls to total revenue two, which is P3, constant price of P3, multiplied by the reduced quantity demanded Q2, which is now equal to area C. So here we can see that total revenue for firms offering inferior goods, false. Okay, so that is the idea. <clears throat> so I will go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graph A, the market for normal goods, graph B, the market for inferior goods. We're measuring price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis. We have four downward sloping demand curves in accordance to the law of demand, labeled D1, D2, D3, and D4. In graph A, for the market for normal goods, we have a uh, demand curve D1 with a price set at P1, quantity demanded at Q1, which is point A. And in graph B, along D3, we have a price of P3 with a quantity demanded at Q3, which is point C. As a result of rising income, the, the demand for normal goods increases from D1 to D2. And in the graph for uh, inferior goods, we see that the demand for inferior goods decreased from D3 to D4. In graph A, although price is held constant at P1, there's an increase in the quantity of demand at Q2 along the new demand curve of D D2, which is point B, and that leads to an increase in total revenue for these firms. Total revenue originally was TR1 equals P1 times Q1 equal to the surface area of A, and it increases to total revenue two equal to P1 times Q2, which is equal to the service areas of A plus B. Thus, these firms generate more revenue due to the increase in demand. For firms offering inferior goods at a price of P3, quantity demanded was originally Q3 along D3, but as a result of the reduced demand from D3 to D4, we see that total revenue has been reduced to P3 times Q4. Again, in graph B, total revenue was originally P3 times Q3, which is equal to area C plus D, and then it's reduced to total revenue, total revenue two, which is equal to P3 times Q2, which is equal to area C. So total revenue for firms offering inferior goods falls. We will explore this topic of normal versus inferior goods more in the next section when we go over elasticity. All right. And there will be an additional video highlighting the same concept, but looking at a fall in income for and its impact on normal and inferior goods. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.